there is even across species where we think the only species that matters is homo sapiens, or human beings, and we treat Earth like a trash can, and if you're not our species, who cares? Right. right. So the interconnected reality of life is somehow ignored, and we, we want to try to see what that's about. So in terms of these questions on this slide, what is the mind? The mind does this thing where it categorizes the presumed divisions in the world, it then comes up with a concept, and then comes up with symbol. And so we can have the symbol, you know, human beings versus the others, or even self versus other. So we want to really watch that, and we can say, well, what is a healthy mind? And we're going to try to get to some deep responses to these questions, so we can see how can we stop the other end, or at least significantly reduce it. Okay. So on the next slide, we would say, well, at least these slides. You can see where it resonates with everything you're all about. Yeah. And when we talk about the larger we that you so beautifully invited us to consider, how do you see these three things going together? Self, identity, and belonging when it comes to moving from the small we to the larger we? Well, it's, it's, it's very complicated in a number of ways. So first of all, as you know, there are multiple selves. And, and um, there's been experiments because as people shift from self to self, and you can do things to activate one self over the other self. And what people are playing with now um, is inviting those different selves to come forward. Um, selves within a given individual? That's right. And so I think when we other really deeply and rigidly, we not only cut off the other, the parent other, we cut off aspects of ourselves. Part of the self that I don't like, I can't relate to it, so I need to actually make sure it doesn't come up. Um, and again, so how do we have an identity that actually can hold that? And I think part of it, some of the great work you did, Dan, in terms of um, the, the will and helping people to move from one space to the other. Um, and people who are most have difficulty moving are people who are considered having an authoritarian personality. They can't shift. They can't make the moves. And one of the things that's happening in the world today as the world is shifting so fast is they want to put the brakes on. It's like the future is too scary. Can we go back? That's why these authoritarian tropes always, we're going to go back to the past. Mm -hmm. When things were simple, when men were men, mm -hmm. women were women, and, and we didn't have people of color. We didn't have these different religions. Of course, there was no such time. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> but I think helping people, I mean, I think we have to help people navigate these different terrains because the world is speeding up. The world is speeding up and it does put stress on us to try to navigate this. So one of the things that comes up in this body as you're speaking, and I, and I loved how Paulette was saying, you, you have the lowercase letters because why should the feeling that the body you're born to, the name it was given, to be hovering over in capital letters, I love that. Um, the thing that comes up inside of this body is, um, and this, this is something that looks at a larger issue from uh, both biology, where E.O. Wilson, for example, talks about how because we rely on the visual and auditory channels, we have this illusion of separation that is really a vulnerability of our limitation of sensory input. So even from a biological level, we have this view of here's an entity here, here's an entity there, and we can do it that way. From the categories to concepts to symbols, we can live as if we're nouns, right? Like John is here, Dan is here, this is the self of Dan, here's the self of John, oh wow. Well, let me do right. something. No, the self of Dan yeah. there. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. So we can do this dance, right? right? And so now we've got this thing where you're kind of nounifying things. Now, what was fascinating to me in diving into a bunch of different sciences in this field of interpersonal neurobiology is when you get to physics, you find that just like when you're swimming in, in a pool or in a lake or an ocean, sometimes if you're doing the breaststroke, you're above air, you're in the air realm, sometimes you're underwater in the water realm, you've got two realms in our one reality. Well, it turns out in physics, we now know, and this was the cover story in July 2018, we have two realms of our one reality. 
One realm is what Newton studied, macrostates, that have the appearance of being like nouns. Entity here, entity here, and we can interact, but we're fundamentally separate in space and time. That's the macrostate Newtonian world. It's real, there are all sorts of ways of showing that it exists. However, if you get to smaller objects, like pure units of energy, like electrons or photons, called quanta, which are probability fields, there are no longer any entities. Things are actually events. And there's no longer the separation. They're more deeply interconnected. So it's really a verb-like world than a noun like world. Right. So one thing I worry about when we address this issue of the othering is we're kind of nounifying ourselves because we want to cling to something that feels like you can hold on to it, like a noun, because a verb is always changing, you know? And I think that may be part of the challenge we have as a human species, is we tend to nounify things into in-group and out-group and things like that. Does that resonate with you? Very much, and one reason we talk about other ring instead of the other, other ring, because it's a practice. And, and, uh, and it's, this is not a plug, but if you think of the name of my book, um, the recent one is called Racing to Justice. Mm -hmm. And so racing is a practice. And what we think of, that's the race, that's the race. No, it's a set of practices that we do to create the illusion of a stable race. Uh, and, you know, those of you who study uh, Buddhism, for example, uh, I lived in India for a while, and I was really struck when I returned from India because when I studied with uh, Goenka, some, some of you may know of Goenka. Uh, and so the deep learning from the practice and it wasn't an ideology, it was a practice, because when you were deep in that quiet space, you could actually watch different selves come into being and then go away. Mm -hmm. And so the deep teaching of Buddha, as I understand it, was the no-self realization. The realization that there was no permanent self. When it came to the United States, it got translated into self-realization. Mm. <laughs> they nounified the whole they thing. They nounified the whole thing. Wow. Uh, and, and I was like, wait a minute, somebody, that's a little bit of a baby switch. Uh, <laughs> uh, and the, the fact that things change, I mean, again, uh, Buddhism is the idea of impermanence, that everything is impermanent, right? So I was talking to uh, our host before, and I talked about earthquakes, and she's from. Uh, England and she lives in Kansas and she said earthquakes and earthquakes it's terrible things and they are right but to me there's actually a profound beauty in them as well because it wrecks our illusion that things are solid mm. and we and when that happens I mean I know there's destruction and people can lose lives but the earth is reminding us that it's not solid mm -hmm. it's like oh Stand still, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, um, and I was here in 89 after the earthquake. <laughs> and afterwards, there was like this space where everybody was relating. It was like being yes. going to the moon. Mm -hmm. It's like instead of like noticing all these differences, it's like, yeah. where were you when the earthquake hit? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Any water? Yeah, you exactly. know, we're all connected in some way. The earth reminded us yeah. uh, of and so we need to be able to get there without a tragedy. Because it happened after 9-11. It happened after big earthquakes. Can we actually learn that we're together? And can we dance together? I don't need some time, you need some yeah. time. You yeah. know? Um, and, and one last thing I'll say is that there was a time in history when people were better at this, and it became part of our story and our religion that you had to have a single, permanent, stable self. And if you didn't, something was wrong with you. Mm -hmm. And how it came out of Christianity was that in speaking in tongues. And so speaking in tongues, think about that in, in the Greek chorus. There's different things that are coming in my mind. Voices are coming in my mind of hearing them, and they're directing me. Yeah. And as long as this Holy Spirit with the chorus, it's okay. But here was the rub there. Mm -hmm. Women were not allowed to speak in tongues. <laughs> and so men could hear the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues. <laughs> and that was okay. If women heard voices, they were witches. And literally, mm -hmm. we kill millions of women because, no, 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 no. You hear, you hear voices? Mm -hmm. Must be a witch. The devil mm -hmm. must possess you. Mm -hmm. And so we've actually made it hard for people, and I'm not saying there's not people who need medical attention, but we've made it hard for people to actually experience the fluidity. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. There's something wrong with you if you need yeah. any fluid. Yeah, exactly. Well, this is this is an issue that, and actually, would, I think it would be fun to just zip ahead here to something that we've never talked about before, but I think would be fun to look at, which is this, that if you think who we are, like right now, just, and I know we've had lots of talks today saying that nothing really exists and everything is a dream and all that stuff, and there's some beautiful ways of poetically deeply getting into that, but in terms of racial injustice, what's going on with the immigration issues, what's happening on our ecological front. Um, to get very practical about it, I think nonifying is creating so many of the problems in those areas of justice, whether it's environmental justice or social justice. So I want to just offer you, in terms of a discussion that you and I might engage with everyone about, is that this but there's a view of mind as emerging from energy flow. Sometimes energy just flows us through us like a conduit, and we have a more verb-like experience of life. Other times we come up with constructing these things that are like nouns, and then we cling on to the idea of a self rather than self-in. So that's the first thing to say. And what that means is, if this is a way of thinking about the mind, on this slide you can see that the mind is both within the whole body, not just your brain, first of all, but it's also happening right now, not only between you and me, John, but among all of us in this room, right? And so let's pause there for a moment, because then we're going to dive into this thing called the Wheel of Awareness and talk about it, you know, time to do the practice, because I want to show you, after surveying 10,000 people with it, what came up and how it relates directly to other. So this slide, how does that fit with your experience of kind of where we're at uh, and not seeing the mind as just something that's coming from a solo self inside of a body or even inside of a brain, but rather the withinness of it and the betweenness of it. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because uh, obviously you talk about the mind and the brain, and they're obviously two different things. Mm -hmm. uh, but our interconnectedness is so profound. Uh, and. Someone was saying, and I know this is not political, but someone was saying, it's about time we have a woman president. Uh, and one thing that many women have had to experience, the physical experience of being both physically, spiritually connected to another human being that's having a baby. Mm -hmm. uh, and then feeding the baby. Uh, and, and men are sort of standing on the sideline, waiting for the woman to get through, right? Yeah. So, okay, come on, you know, get the kid off of you so we can get back to to life, right? <laughs> uh, and so some people have written that one reason that men are so good at war is because we're so afraid of life. Mm. Uh, and so there's a book that's problematic for some, Denial of Death by Ernest Becker, who talks about uh, our fear of death. And the way we try to conquer death is by taking other lives. Uh, and so I think that the embodiment uh, of the mind and the interconnectedness of the mind. Mm -hmm. um, I get students at Berkeley and it's like, I want to get away from my parents, I want to get away from my culture, I want to just be me. And I say, you take all that stuff away, who are you? Yeah. Yeah. Take away your mother, your father, your culture, your language, who are you? You know, there's, there's not necessarily some kernel there. This is the real me. I am my father, I am my mother, I am my friends. I am those relationships, mm -hmm. those relationships. And it's not that those relationships are ultimately determinate, but they're ultimately influential. Yeah. They're ultimately influential. And so, in, in, here in the United States, where we really like the sovereignty of the individual, and then we extend that to the sovereignty of the nation. And one of the reasons that we're in this deep anxiety is what does the sovereignty of the nation mean in a time of climate change? Yeah. And we're saying, okay, we cut back our CO2 gases, but the Chinese didn't, no fair. You know, their gases are coming over here. And so there's all these ways we can, we're both interconnected, and yet we don't turn into a blob. It doesn't mean we can't differentiate. It can't mean right. that. So I think this is a, a really important and complicated thing, and I think it speaks to the future, how we, oh, this last thing. So you've written books together. When I'm working with other people on some project, whether it's a book or a dance or a basketball game, there's the flow. Mm -hmm. And we can't identify where something originated. Was that your idea or my idea? Right. We don't really think it emerged. Exactly. Us. 
Yeah. Pus, not from me, not from you, but it emerges. Right. Pus. And that emergence is actually a mathematical property that's described in the probability theory called complexity theory of what happens when the elements of a complex system mm -hmm. are actually interacting with each other. Emergence is a fundamental property in this universe we live in that happens. And in fact, one way of thinking about the mind, if you look at this fourth facet of subjective experience, consciousness, information processing, one is that it's a self-organizing property which looks like this, that it's this emergent process that can't be just happening from you or from me. It's happening from the two of us, which is part of the excitement I felt about inviting you to come up here, even though we've never done this before. Um, and the interesting thing is you can actually ask mathematically what optimizes self-organization, because when you can identify that, we might have a path forward for stopping othering and from promoting social justice.